I know what you're thinking. Reading and writing, really wire man? Yes. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to extract or add values from a collection and to a collection. How to combine multiple collections together and split collections up into single values again. Let's get to it. The read node will read a single index or multiple indices from a given collection. Simply put the collection you want to read from into the main inlet and give it an index to read. Here I am reading values from the linear collection one by one using a float in as a slider. Here I am using a sequence node set to a size of three to read three values from the same linear node. I am using a saw node to adjust the beginning value of the sequence node. Using sequence is a nice way to read multiple values from a collection. Note that you can increase or decrease the step size to create an offset in the sequence node. You could use this for example to get the odd or even indexes from a collection. There's one final thing the read node can do that is really powerful. The read node can interpolate between two indices. Whoa, stop there Wireman, what are you talking about? Let me explain. As I have explained before, the indices run from 0 to the collection size minus 1. Indices are integers, whole numbers. There is no index 1.5 or 6.3. And most nodes that deal with indices will simply ignore any decimals, but not the read node. In the inspector, you can set the interpolation of the read node to linear. With this turn on, the linear node will interpolate the values between two indices. What this means is that it calculates the values in between two indices. Let's say you have a collection of just two values, 0 and 10. Index 0 would be 0, index 1 would be 10. Without interpolation, 0 0.5 would still be 0. With interpolation, it would calculate the values between 0 and 10 and output 5. Let's demonstrate this concept. I've created a collection of 5 float2 values. I've made a read node and added a float in node running from 0 to 4. The float2 collection is used as xy coordinates for the circle. Let's move the slider around. Whenever an integer is hit, the circle jumps to its new position. Now let's try that with interpolation turned on. A nice, smooth pad is calculated. Now I'll replace the float in for an oscillator and we'll have a circle moving along the coordinates. Here's a quick little note that can really help you when working with read and write nodes. The size node simply outputs the size of a collection as an integer. No big deal, right? No, but take a look at this patch. I have a circle pattern with just four points. I'm using the same interpolated read plus oscillated trick as we have used in the previous example. But what if I want to increase the collection size? In this case, the amount of points. I would need to manually reset the amplitude of the saw node to match the points of the circle pattern node. That can be really annoying, especially when you're still working on your patch and are experimenting. The size node is here to save the day. As I scale up the amount of points, the amplitude of the saw node gets adjusted too. Remember that we did the sequence into the read node to read multiple values from a single collection? Well, you can almost forget that now as I introduce you to the span node. The span node will read a portion of the incoming collection. Note that the sequence method is still useful if you need an offset, for example, to read all the even or uneven indices. But most of the time, the span node will do the trick. That's it for the reading part. Let's get to writing. The write node will write its value to the given index in a collection. Here we have a collection of 10 floats, all set to 0. The write node will write its value, in this case 0 0.5, to the index. Again, we are using a saw oscillator to run through all the indices. In this example, we are using the write node to pop up one circle at a time. 
Let's expand a bit on this by adding a smooth note after the write. The write node can also write multiple values to multiple indices at the same time. Let's start by writing two indices at the same time. I'll instance my saw oscillator as well, as we need two indices. Nothing is happening because the two values from the saw are the same. I'll offset one of the phases. Nice. Now let's write a second value. This is a nice way to create movement patterns that are really difficult to get from just oscillators. The two final nodes that I want to show you in this tutorial are split and join. The join node takes a single channel value, in this case shapes, and combines them into a collection. The split node takes a collection, in this case from the linear node, and breaks them into single channel values. Simple as that. All right, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to um, create a polygon. And now that we know how to read and write, we can use this to um, trace a polygon. So that is what we are going to do. First off, I'll create a, a polygon shape. I'll just use, um, do we use circle? We'll use this um, circle pattern node to create our um, polygon. Uh, let's start really, really basic and then, then make it crazy. Uh, for simplicity's sake, it's good to see that it is an edge. And the next thing we want to do is create something that could trace it. So the circle would be perfect. And we need to move that circle over our polygon shape. We want to trace it. So next thing what we do is we read one of the values of the circle pattern. I'll put this in a signal mode. Um, let's put this through a shape render so we can see what we are doing. Make this red, copy the shape render for the edge, make it white, and I'll just add the two together. Oops, let's use a video mixer instead, it's cleaner anyway. All right, so as we create increase the index, we can move our little circle over the edge of the polygon. Now, the uh, what we've learned about interpolation, so if we set it to linear, we can create a more smooth um, smooth movement. Of course, we need, we need a float in because this slider is a integer by default. And a saw node would be perfect for this. All right. Now we just use the size trick. So we take the size of the pattern and we set that to our amplitude and our circle, our, our little circle is tracing our uh, polygon. And even if I change the amount of points or let's say open or close it, it will still trace the polygon just fine. Now let's have some fun with this, see what, what kind of crazy stuff we can make with this. Um, let's... Mm, add some Perlin noise. I'll disconnect everything here. I'm just going to create a more interesting, um, more interesting pattern. We'll have Perlin noise. We'll have two Perlin noises. We'll offset each of them and pack them together. And we'll do that uh, crossfade trick we did earlier. So the circle pattern in the one, crossfader in the other. And now we have our little wiggly, wiggly polygon. This can still go in here. It's still the same. And 
we want this into the read over there. So now our circle moves around no matter how chaotic it will move over the edge. Now, what if we want multiple circles, right? Could be that that is something that we want. Let's increase the size a little bit so there's space for multiple circles. And we'll simply instance the saw to, let's say, five. So that goes into there. And then, of course, the problem is that the saw is producing five times the same value. And we'll fix that with a linear node. Also set it to five or even cleaner. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Um, and offset the face. Let's see. Five. Yes, here we go. Now we have our five circles moving along. Maybe add a gradient palette for the five shapes. Maybe make it a little bit slower. Um, yeah, and at this point the the options are are limitless. Limitless. We could we could trace it using um, using a, a video mixer and a feedback loop. So we could say this into that, this into that, and then the end result into that. Or you could even just disable the visual of the polygon at all. And now crossfade it. Maybe lower the amount of feedback. Put the polygon back in. Yeah, at this point, it's all your creativity. Um, I just wanted to, sh to demonstrate how you can uh, outline or chase, chase a line. Now we have these uh, weird ghosts wobbling around, drunk ghosts. What have we learned to get today creating drunk ghosts? Well, go make your own drunk ghosts and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And that was it for this tutorial. Before you move on to the manipulating collections tutorial, I want you to check out the back to school and little green back tutorials in the built-in wire instancing course. Meet me in the next video when you're done.